This is St. Mary's Church in Waplode, Lincolnshire. This church has a splendid tower which has a stairway turret at one angle representing the work of three great building periods. The base, which serves as a south transept, has zigzag enriching its pointed arcading and is a transitional Norman piece of work. The second and third stages above, with lancet windows pierced in their bold arcading, are from the 13th century, and the top stage, with pairs of lights adorned with clusters of shafts and dog tube, is probably from the 14th century. Look how steeply pitched this roof line is of the building which originally connected the tower to the church. This is a very old door and it's in a 13th century doorway opening on the south aisle. The west front showing the fine early English doorway from around the year 1200. The clear story you can see here has continuous round-headed arcading broken on the south side by big windows and above are the remains of the old hammer beam roof adorned with angels and tracery. This nave inside is also equally impressive as the exterior, more than a hundred feet long with seven massive arches on each side supported on piers of varying shapes. The four eastern bays are of typical Norman work, but the western bays, three of them, are displaying in their pillars and capitals the transition from the Norman to the early English style. Here you can see where the nave was probably lengthened in the 14th century. Now you may have noticed a chimney on the outside. Well, this north transept was uh, long sealed off and used as a village school complete with a fireplace. The rough looking windows were cut through in the 15th century when the higher roof was added.
Here on the north side of the nave, again you can see the earlier left and later right Norman arches corresponding to the change of styles within the small round topped windows. Here we have the royal arms of George III hung over the chancel arch, allegedly damaged by Victorian indoor bird shooters. This rather undersized chancel contrasts markedly with the splendours of the nave. It was largely rebuilt in 1819. The rich canopied pulpit is of Jacobean work. This is the canopy or tester of the Jacobean pulpit which helped the audience hear clearly the sermon. Is late 15th century work. The chancel was rebuilt in 1818 but still possesses its Norman arch with a rich hood of zigzag partly cut away from a rude loft. The loft has long since been removed, but the turret and stairway which led to it is still here. This stairway once led to the now vanished roof loft. And here too is a splendid canopied monument recently repainted to Sir Anthony Irby who has a tiny place in the literature because 
Phineas Fletcher, one of the minor poets of the early Stuart times, wrote an elegy of 100 standards lamenting his unripe decease. Sir Anthony, who died in 1610, is shown here in armour and baggy breeches with his wife, who died 15 years later by his side in a flowing gown. By the tomb kneel three boys and two girls in rich lace collars. Coats of arms, crown and monuments, and on the wall above are a banner and helmet. Sir Anthony Irby's son, one of the little fellows kneeling by the side of the tomb, became a parliamentarian commander during the Civil War when he helped Cromwell to capture Royalist Crowland. Also lying on the floor of the west end of the church are Saxon fragments carved with interlacing bands, a woman's head peeping from a quatrefoil under a leafy canopy, a stump of an old churchyard cross, and also some coffins and fine 13th century floor stones with leafy crosses. The font is a copy of a Norman one and it stands imposingly on three wide steps. St Mary's Church in Waplode, Lincolnshire. 